Good afternoon, Hervé. What do you see as the main trends supporting the need for more bandwidth? To this question, I can answer two ways. Uh, the first one is the standard one, and talking about the increase of video traffic, uh, the number of connected people beyond 7 billion, and going towards the Internet of Things, uh, with every device being connected. Or I can illustrate the question by talking about extra communications and telling you that in 2002, we introduced our first product, our first platform, which was capable of 2.4 terabits. And customers were saying, well, you know, it's way too much. And today we have a platform capable of 24 terabits, and it's OK. It's the right size. So uh, obviously, within 10 years, the demand increased by more than 10 times. If it's just the right size now, do you not feel you're behind the times a little? No, because uh, we have uh, uh, obviously plans. Uh, and I, I would say, compared to the industry, uh, we still have uh, a lot of standard technology. Uh, you know, we have obviously energy technology, but we have 50 gigahertz channel spacing. We have something other people don't have, which is optical spectrum. And we work on this very early on. And we didn't concentrate only on this aspect. So that's the reason why we worked on energy two and a half years ago. But uh, we still have this advantage of being able to uh, use the optical spectrum. How do you feel the optical industry responds to increasing bandwidth needs? Well, uh, the uh, optical industry uh, responded, I would say, two, two years ago, approximately, by introducing the energy technology, which uh, has been a, a big leap compared to uh, the 10G technology, which, uh, which did last for about a decade. And I think that this energy technology is also going to last about a decade, because the industry does need uh, to rely on some kind of standard and see the benefit of the evolution of technology with the cost reduction, for example. Are there any other interesting technologies that you see with respect to increasing bandwidth? So, uh, at the same time we introduced energy technology, uh, we introduced a new platform. And this platform is relying on Rodum technology, which is now, uh, I would say, standard uh, for the, the optical products and also OTN. Uh, this new standard is uh, quite promising, has been used uh, on, uh, I would say, multiplexing schemes and being uh, able to encapsulate any service. It is also uh, evolving towards uh, OTN switching. What do you think about the push that we see from some vendors in favor of 400G up to one terabit? Uh, I would say innovation is always needed. Innovation can be going two ways, either towards better performance, like 4G and 1 terabit, or cheaper. And I think that even if we are pursuing you know, increased capacity, we are also looking for better cost for the industry. And I think that a second generation of energy is even needed. Can you explain that in a bit more depth? In technical terms, you mean? Yeah, uh, for example, uh, our first deployment at Energy uh, were uh, using MUX Ponder cards, meaning a lot of 10G services being, 10, uh, services being combined into one Energy pipe. And we haven't deployed a lot of transponders of Energy services because I, I still think that the client side, the, the modules which are used on the client side, are not at the right price point. And I think that the, the component industry needs to do more work, uh, introduce new technologies, more integration to reach the right price point, the right power, uh, and so on. How does the advent of 100G in terrestrial networks impact on submarine cable systems? And are you surprised that the impact was first felt on the terrestrial side of things rather than submarine business? Well, it is true that uh, in the industry, uh, in the past 20 years, submarine technology was kind of leading. And, and this time, uh, energy technology has been introduced first on, on terrestrial networks. Uh, however, uh, we have seen uh, also an impact of energy technology on submarine networks. We've deployed uh, in the past six months uh, the first uh, commercial energy link uh, across the Mediterranean. Uh, I think that our customers want to have similar technology uh, 
in both networks. It's absolutely uh, important for them to, to be able to have homogeneous uh, technology end to end. Uh, but uh, it will take a bit more time to be able to, to bridge the Pacific, for example, at 100G. So uh, Xterra is introducing uh, a long-haul uh, submarine technology by the end of this year. What does Xterra see as the most promising markets for optical networking infrastructures? So for uh, Xterra Communications, uh, the market is, uh, is a bit specific in the sense that we are a new company, a young company, and we are facing uh, incumbent suppliers. And uh, we have uh, made a lot of work in the emerging markets. Uh, and there are two reasons to, for this. One, uh, a lot of capex is spent in these markets because they need to create infrastructure. And on the other hand, uh, for a young company like us, it's easier to penetrate markets where you have new players, new service providers who don't have a long history with the, uh, the industry. So we are competing on a, uh, in a fair way, I would say, with the, the incumbents.